Hi, my name is Tai Mitsuji, and I'm here speaking with Grant Stevens for Art Collector about his new installation, The Forest, which is currently on show at Sullivan in Sydney. Hi, Grant. Hi, Tai. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so because The Forest is such a complex work, uh, perhaps you could just walk us through what a viewer's sort of experience in the gallery would be. Yep. So, yeah, the work is uh, computer generated and it's playing across three screens. So when you walk into the gallery, you'll see um, these three screens that are suspended from the ceiling, kind of floating a little bit. And on the screen is uh, like computer generated imagery of a forest. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, when you walk in, it, de depending on where the camera is in the scene, you might see slightly different things. Say the camera is um, has artificial intelligence, so it's not necessarily like a video file that you can play start to finish. Wow. It's always generating new imagery. Um, and yeah, it depends on where the camera is, it will depend on what you see. Yeah, because it's just continually making its way through this artificial landscape, you know, according to this uh, randomized algorithm. Perhaps I could just share um, the screen so that we can actually get a sense of um, what, what this like truly exquisite landscape looks like. Can you see that okay? Yep. Do you wanna just talk us through the experience of the work? You know, this is one frame of, you know, what is an infinite amount of possibilities, you know, that exist um, in the forest? Yeah, where this is like a still image, obviously, and there's a meadow bit and it's near the lake, which you can kind of see. It's a fairly large kind of terrain. So there's, there's pockets that are much more dense forests. There's a waterfall, there's a river, yeah, different different parts of the of the terrain. And so the camera is, is like programmed to perpetually move through the landscape and it pivots and tilts as well. So it's somewhat relaxing, I think, but it also has some movements and some elements that are a bit um, creepy or a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, because I know there is that sort of tension that you intended to really write into the piece. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind it and sort of some of the themes that you're trying to explore, you know, specifically in terms of this tension? Yeah, there's, there's a few different things going on. And I guess one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately is the way that, you know, for lots of us, digital technologies are kind of integrated into all aspects of our daily lives. You know, so I spend a lot of time with a computer screen Mm. Um, I make all my work on computers and so I'm just constantly looking at computer screens and then you start to notice things like desktop backgrounds or um, the different ways that technology and popular culture have kind of embedded imagery of the natural environment almost like an antidote to itself so in this particular work I was, I was starting to think about this relationship between the digital environment and the natural environment and also trying to, I guess, avoid this binary relationship or, or kind of bring out some of the tension in the relationship between the digital and the natural. Right, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, the idea of sort of going into a virtual space in order to somehow get closer to the natural world, it's, it's counterintuitive. And yet, when you are sort of experiencing your piece, there is that sense, you know, there is some sort of solace and there is some kind of um, sense that we're getting closer to these organic things just because it is so uh, rendered in such a seductive and detailed fashion. Yeah, and that's the important part of the work for me that I, I don't want it to be just fully bleak, you know, and I don't want it to be fully, you know, like Bambi-like, you know. Right. Of course. It, it should be a bit relaxing, but also, yeah, there's some tension in the way that the camera moves. It, because it, the camera has artificial intelligence, it, it's kind of mimicking a, a human point of view shot, mm -hmm. but it's mechanical and it's algorithmic. So it, it creates a, these kind of movements that are unhuman, you know, non-human in a way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the soundtrack also kind of amplifies some of that tension. The soundtrack kind of moves in and out of tune. Right. So it can be relaxing one moment and then it's like, it starts to bend out of tune. That is really interesting in terms of, you know, there's an emptiness to the work, even though it's filled with so many things, you know, and, and the soundtrack sort of helps to fill it in some ways. But then I know that you've said this, but, um, you, you know, we, we don't see certain things. What don't we see in the work? Yeah, so there's, I guess, I made a conscious 
decision along the way that there wouldn't be animals or or people in the landscape and yeah like when one of the things that happened when i was making the work was there are these birds outside my window and they started to chirp while i was watching it kind of um mm. when i was testing it and it, i had a moment where i thought are those birds in the work or mm. not in the work That's and so i thought it, it like having the bird sounds in there kind of made it a little bit kind of too disney you know that it, right. that it was like more optimistic than what i was hoping for and so having no animals no other kind of living beings having the ai kind of camera be the the only kind of sentient thing moving through this terrain was yeah a conscious decision and and for me it's like it's fully simulated and digital and it's kind of like seductive in the graphics but there's also this kind of emptiness there that it's you know completely synthesized i think what's really interesting um is that you know i, I read that you borrowed some of the technology that you've used here from sort of video gaming and what's so sort of fascinating is, you know, in that video game landscape, you know, you're typically doing things. There are tasks or people that you're shooting at or, you know, it's filled, it's jam packed. And it sort of almost reflects today, which is so fast. That's the condition of the now is this fastness. But in your work, it's so slow. You know, it's, it's fantastically meditative. I mean, there's such an interesting tension that comes out of that form and that pace not really being aligned or what we're used to. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the, I'm using 3D gaming technologies to, to make this work, but it's not interactive. That's one thing to say, like you can't um, manipulate what you see, you know, it's the, the AI camera that's doing that. But yeah, I've been thinking a lot about the way, like digital technology has lots of great things, has lots of um, ways that it's improving our, you know, experience of daily life, um, so on and so on. But it's also creating lots of distractions and, like this sense of fatigue, you know, that or that the digital environment is overwhelming, you know, so we're constantly surrounded by screens and by information, by different forms of communication that it's becoming so overwhelming that we need to do a digital detox or um, we need to step outside of the digital somehow. Mm -hmm. And something like slow TV is also a good example of this kind of counter movement to the, the speed of visual culture. Yeah, so in this work, those are, I guess some of the reference points that are in the back of my mind. Yeah. And I think that's going to resonate with so many people, you know, given it that over the past weeks and months, everyone has just become so acutely aware of, you know, how much we rely on navigating, you know, the contemporary space online. Yeah, definitely. Like the, I didn't necessarily of course know that um, there would be a pandemic when I when I started making this over summer the bushfires were much more kind of present in right. um, yeah. in our lives at that point but the the kind of great lock-in that's happened over, over the last few months kind of means that this context gives this work a, a different kind of lens and I've definitely been one of those people wanting to get outside and go hiking and be in the natural environment while we've been inside you know looking at screens constantly the digital screens are already, you know, our phones or TVs or computers are already this kind of primary way of uh, engaging prior to the pandemic. But through the pandemic, it's been even more so, I think. Mm. And, and do you think there's something almost proleptic about the work that's foretelling, you know, how we will interact with nature in the sort of, I don't know, decades or centuries to come? Yeah, I mean... That would be bleak, I think, if the, if the only way we, we get to engage with the natural environment is right. through simulations. But I guess another thing I was thinking about in making the work is the way that algorithms and AI already influence so much of what we see. So when we do image searches, you know, algorithms are, are showing us images that they think we want to see. Or when you scroll through social media, you're not seeing a sequential list of things that have been posted you the algorithms are already kind of informing what you're seeing it's part of the reason that in this work the imagery is really idealized you know mm. so in the process of making it i was doing image searches and the things that rise to the top are these kind of picturesque idealized images of forests and the natural environment yeah that that is so interesting i mean i, I mean in the work you, you start and, and you're sort of immersed in this fantastic, you know, picturesque landscape. But then as it does go on, you sort of realize that your whole experience, perhaps because it is point of view, is driven by something else that 
it's sort of forcing you to, you know, go in a certain direction or, or guiding you through the landscape that, you know, you're outside in, in this space of freedom and you're very much controlled what you're saying. It's really interesting. Yeah, and some, sometimes the camera will, you know, end up looking at the grass, you know, for an extended period of time, or it might kind of get positioned near a rock or something that as an artist or a cinematographer or a photographer, you wouldn't choose that point of view. <laughs> right, but right. The, you know, the, the programming is kind of leading it to that point. Yeah, no, 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 that is fascinating. I know that you've sort of spoken about wellness retreats, you know, you know, in relation to this work and, and, and that sort of the soothing nature of it. Um, what's your experience when you watch your work back? What's your feeling? Do you, do you have that or, or is it a more critical experience? It's a bit of both, of course. But yeah, I guess that in testing the work as well, you know, I, I try to, one of the things was about the pace of it, like we've talked about. And I think I have a fairly high threshold for slowness if that makes sense i wanted to make it slower and uh so but i showed a few people and they're like no no i think it's slow enough <laughs> um but yeah i think in terms of like wellness retreats and so on like i often make works about things i feel a bit conflicted about or confused right. about so you know i use mindfulness apps or i go to yoga um, i go hiking you know so i'm kind of engaging with these or in different ways, you know, say so mindfulness apps or yoga retreats or so on, they kind of evoke the natural environment as this antidote or as this kind of therapeutic, you know, possibility, a counterpoint to the technological or the digital. But I think, you know, it's, it's contrived or it's constructed in some way. So I have this kind of ambivalence towards it. Yeah. Look, Grant, thank you so much for speaking with me. It's, it's been really interesting. And um, perhaps we could also just add that, you know, if people can't see the work in person, there is also a preview online that can be seen.